banana and bears rough beef pod. Welcome everybody to the podcast. We're back. We missed you a week or two, but sure, look, we, we, we'd gallivanting to be doing to build up some stories and chat. Yeah. Do you know, sometimes you need to recharge the battery and you recharge the battery. And I, if anybody follows Anna on Instagram saw the battery got, uh, Jesus, <laughs> the engine was running, full V8 engine was running whatever night you were out and you were karaoke and you won a chicken hat. Oh, yes. That was only on Friday. But so like... Started the weekend. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was after. How many weekends have have we have we not? I think we missed two. I think we missed two weeks. I think. Yeah. Because I went cycling as well. So whenever I was recharging the batteries, my batteries are fucking flat. (laughs) (laughs) I uh, I went cycling. I did an unreal cycle last week and one of our weekends off. Um, Where'd you go? Because it looked like a right gallivant. Yeah, I cycled down to. There's this bike path that goes from Roscoff, which most Irish people will know if you've got yeah. the ferry to France, like it'll come in to Roscoff usually. Um, there's a bike path from Roscoff or a bike route, I should say, because it's not all along a path. Um, Roscoff to like San Sebastian and links up with the Camino de Santiago. Stop. Yeah. And um, so I did part of that. It's called the Velo Dice, And I did part of that. And uh, went down to a little island. It's kind of like Ile de Ray, but it's a little bit bigger and it's just uh, further south. There's a couple of islands there along kind of the, the west coast of France. So just cycle down me tent and everything in me panniers. And um, it's great. I had a fucking great time. Um, of course you did. Of course and, you did. Um, but I never... Sorry now, do you know who I'm pissed off with? Everyone who knew that the Northern Lights were happening and didn't sh- say anything about it or share. Same as that. So I, I was full sure you would be one of the people that was literally consulted by NASA because you don't seem to know about all these cultural or, or uh, eventy things. And I, it all, they all passed me by. Well, I, well, yeah. Well, I tell you something, lads. If you knew the Northern Lights were happening and you didn't tell people, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, honestly. Why wouldn't you share it? Like, if you, you knew absolute something bastards, happen, yeah. absolute bastards. And like, I was, I was, um, I was camping. Like, I was couldn't have been in a more perfect place. You could to literally have stayed in bed and just turned yourself around and stuck your head out the zip. Yeah, even though the the fucking insects are terrible are in they? France. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you to be careful not to leave them into your tent, or else you're fucking goosed altogether. But like I got up to go to the toilet in the middle of the night at half four. Um, and this is the first night. I camped for two nights in two different parts of the island. And like I was just walking around the campsite at half four in the morning, like looking at the stars, thinking like, oh, the stars are so beautiful. And I'd missed the Northern Lights. Ah, Jesus. Yeah, well, I was sound asleep. I didn't uh, I didn't know that any such thing was happening. By the way, I need to, uh, need to uh, just clarify. If you do hear a distant mooing in the background. It is definitely just a mooing cow. The The office at this time of the year, it would seem, is exactly in the sun, direct sun for uh, about seven hours and it is cooking. So I had to leave the door open. Oh, oh Jesus yeah. Christ. It's like 26 degrees outside right now and there's a cow. Oh, yeah. There's a cow just, just for the crack. The cow is even cupping her, her hooves over the fence. She's going, moo, fucking I don't know why she's a Dublin cow, but she fucking meow and all, yeah, fucking meow. So if you do hear that, it's something hasn't fucking broken. It is just the country, the country speaking back to you. So it was a nice day at home. Oh, stunning! Like bananas hot. Like bananas. The last couple of days have been insanely warm, and fine, like fine weather. Like there's a bit of a breeze there today. Like it was like savage, savage stuff altogether. Like. Silage is going. Also, you will hear the hum of different fucking machinery off in the distance too. And the really eager listen, listen people, but they'll hear it. It's uh, yeah, it's what it's great. We oh, we made since we talked, we confirmed on the house. The house is purchased. We are now purchases of land and whatnot. So it is happening. Congratulations! Yes. Great fucking news. Three years of fuck. <laughs> no. Well, this is it. And it's just a case now of doing what I know to do, but it's just getting the timing of everything. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain or be angry about anything because our, we have it in the ink is dry now at this stage, but yeah. it's to get the thing ready and moved in. But hopefully we'll be in there. Yeah. We will be in there 
rough and ready come September. I can tell you that. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> come hell or high water, we're in there rough and ready, regardless. Yeah. Uh, because we've outgrown our little, little property. Um, so Fucking great news. Great, great news. Great news. And yeah, delighted to be back because we, I missed you. I missed you. It was like, I've got nobody to have rugger chats with, like proper rugger I chats. Know. Like, I know, proper therapy. I missed you as well. Yeah. Um, and it was, well, there was a few things now. Do you know what? I'm, I'm a devil. Well, I, sorry. Going back to what you were saying about um the, the karaoke on Friday night, like we yeah. literally just went for a beer on the way home from training because everyone was playing uh, yesterday. Um, so it was just one beer. So it probably looked like a wild night, but like there was karaoke on and just in this bar. 100%. And, uh, we like French karaoke is weird. Everyone was just singing like slow, boring songs, and everyone was rubbish, which is the, is which is great. That's fine, yeah, yeah, standard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, can uh, what kind of misery like, were they singing? What kind of like what are we talking French, here, Adele? French stuff, like no, yeah, but kind of the French, old French stuff, and like Celine Dion and ballads, like ballads, um, until. Well, a few of the girls sang and they won the, the chicken for their head. So if anyone has follows me on Instagram. It's a like, great looking hat. It's a great, oh. such an Anna moment to be wearing that oh, joke. Yeah. Yeah, that was custom made for her. Well, they were giving out different kinds of prizes and then two of the girls in the team got the chicken hat and I was like, oh, well, it's actually, well, it's a cock, obviously. Um, but the word chicken is a bit, a bit friendlier to use. But um, I was like, oh my God, I want one of those so... I said, I was like, where do I go? Like, sign up. She was, she came up with me and we like signed up. And they're all like, you're not going to sing, are you? Like, obviously in French and not with Cork accents. But um, they're all like, you know, oh, you're not going to sing. Are you what? You're, you're, you're not. What? You're not. We, are, we are pure French, boy. Come on, will you? We're not going to sing, are you? <laughs> um, so I, uh, <laughs> I was like, of course I'd sing. Like, obviously, you know, and I'm sure at this stage, most of our listeners know that I don't give a fuck about anything. 110% you're singing. Like, if oh, yeah. I could nearly and put like, the new house on it, like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, like, obviously don't give a fuck and all the girls are like, oh, my God, Anna's going to sing. Are you going to sing on your own? Like, you know, she can sing with you. She can sing with you. It's like, no. <laughs> like a bitch. So, I got this. <laughs> yeah, literally, stand back. And, um... I would. I wanted to sing something, obviously, that like they knew, or you know, that people would know and could kind of join in on. Yeah, so there was just... no point in doing the Richie Richie Kavanaugh special, like Argorian no. fuck go. I mean, you would you would have rocked it, but at the same time, it would be weird. But right? no, no, Beyonce was a much better choice. Um, so did uh single ladies and all the girls came up and danced, and I got the chicken hat. I was fucking delighted with myself. Um, it was great crack, and then so that was Friday night. So then Saturday was just. I think particularly interesting on Saturday. It's a lot of rugby on. I went to top fourteen game. Um, so it's uh, I was gonna say Monster La Rochelle. Oh yeah, fucking monster people everywhere in La Rochelle this weekend. You can tell the direct flights are back. Yeah, because would... Irish people everywhere. <laughs> You'd sent me on a just a picture. Of what was that man drinking out of? You you sent me on a video. Oh, First yeah. a little quick voice Sorry. note. And I told those lads they'd appear in, in, in the podcast. So shout out to Colin Farrell. That's Stop. his name. The fella drinking <laughs> uh, from, the, <laughs> from the jog. And um, Ronan. Even though it's not Ronan O'Gara. Ronan is his friend. But they live in the UK and they love sport. And uh, I saw, I just went, I, they just passed me um, in the stadium. And I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> so one of those were the monster um <laughs> Jumper. We were walking around with your chicken hat at the time going, excuse me, I am the I chicken love, inspector. Uh, what is... Uh... <laughs> no, but uh, every weekend you could bump into fucking Monster fans there. Like, what are you doing here? They were like, oh, just, you know, Raj. I was like, oh, okay. Isn't that <laughs> so, unbelievable? Like, Oh, yeah. That's... We have about three, three fellas in the pub on Friday night on the way home from uh, the karaoke. I stopped into McNulty's to say hello. And there was three, there was actually five people from Monster in there. And um, some of them were flying out, so they couldn't come to our match. But those, the three alphas were like, we'll come to your match. They didn't f- turn up. Colin and Ronan did. So I brought them on a tour of the facilities. So I was like, shout out to the to boys. Them. Yeah, yeah. Good fair play to them. What side? So, no, but I need to know the volume of what, what Colin Farrell was drinking out of. Because that, to me, from the distance, I was trying to work it out. I was like, surely that has to be a jug. A jug jug. So 
it was a joke, but he he was sh- sharing it. I could see oh. them like making friends with people because they were they were stood right in front of us. I could see them making friends with all these French people and started sharing around their beer. So he obviously went and bought a jug, and then he almost have lost his cup or something. I don't know. Um, Colin, if you're listening, you can you can you can enlighten us as to what happened. Yeah. The yeah class. I but you know what you can see it even even a a, a listener of. Another listener, Sharon, she's from Belfast. She was um mm. she was up home in Belfast and I'm assuming she would, either was at the Belfast or they did the Ulster game. She said there was a load of Munster fans just up there as well. It's like, huh, are they up to have a look at Billy Burns before he comes down to Munster? What like the lads are just, they just go on rugby sessions and yeah. show what? Oh fucking fact. Oh, but, it's the best though. Oh, it's the best though. Like, like fucking going off, especially when you're a minority group of oh, fans. You get of a lot of attention. But sure, oh, I I can totally see the merit. And even we were at myself and the, the outflow. We were at the uh, Monster Connacht match mm. last week, and there was a row of lads in front of us who were all in Lions jerseys. But I think they wore them to stay red. But there were a bunch of lads who were just on a weekend as a stag, and they're like, "Oh no, we're just a." Just a, came away for the weekend and we wanted to go see the yeah. legendary Thoman Park and we're enjoying ourselves no end. Like, and the boys were on it. Sorry, like, where, were they, where were they from? Oh, oh, oh the, some part of the UK, it was like St. Albans or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But they were, yeah, they were okay, again the but... same thing, like they were, but they were trying to blend in because so they wore they didn't have Munster jerseys, so they wore their Lions jerseys. Yes, yes, yes yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but you should actually you should wear your home club jersey when you I go think to so, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. I love that though. Raj has nearly turned into like, he's like, you know, when the the appearance of our lady, our lady at knock happened with for those two girls, and they built an airport and everything as a result of it, really. Or they crowbarred the reasoning behind it, and she only showed up for a while apparently. Like, and if you listen to Christy Moore, she showed up in the right field because the other one is full of rocks. But she, Raj is Raj is a blow in like, and yet people are going, people are just going, Ara Raj. As if they're going to get to hang out with Raj. Like it's mm-hmm. it's just amazing oh, yeah. that just the fact that they can assign so much to him still. They're going, Well, yeah. Raj, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it needs yeah. no more explanation. I love that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. And like well, especially around the time of the World Cup, there's people going around in Monster Gear constantly, like just hoping to bump into Raj. <laughs> but um well I fucking so we played on Sunday then. We played yesterday against Perpignan. It's our la- it was our last league game. And so we'll actually play Perpignan again in the semi-final. Oh, so you won. You beat them. Oh, yeah. Good good score. We, we, we played well. Well, we did. We, we weren't perfect, but we played well. But uh, I was the captain uh, for the day because our captain wasn't playing. Le captain. And, uh, le, is it le captain? Is it? How do you say? What is it in French? Uh, Capitaine. Ah, way better. Capitaine. 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 Um, Capitaine. Capitaine. Yeah. Oh, well, geez, that sounds great. Well, I tell you, no, I'll tell you, they're calling me. <laughs> they're call- so, Jesus, where do I start with this one? The girl, so the girls are obviously, do you know, like anytime you have a foreigner on the team, you, you teach them all the bad words. Of course. So Day one. Words. So one of the words, which is, which is funny, is the word schneck. Is the word for Fanny? Snake. And yeah, but I was like, that's sounds like because, what a, like, a Galway person would call a snake. Oh no, no! Like sh- I, I said it's like oh, do you know snacks? Like when you have a snack. Oh, a snack. Like, oh, like snack. A snack. Yeah, ah, yeah. So, ah, ah. so that's... I was like, oh, like you know, snack. Like depending how you say it or where you're from, is actually something to eat. And they were like, well, same with snack. Ah. So, <laughs> La, ha 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 so very funny yeah. so I come every week when we have a match I come with jellies for the whole team and I give everyone a jelly but they're called schnecks now everyone's calling them schnecks even though that means fanny why would you but call everyone... them fannies when they're jellies B- because because I call them schnecks okay right 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 okay yeah okay so now they're just called schnecks so like and it's so, so you, have, insi- you insist that all the girls line up. Oh, like eat, everyone, everyone says snacks. it now. Everyone, everyone's using it all the time now. Like, but they were calling me Captain Schneck, which is Captain Fanny, actually. But uh, I think we just found who found the title of today's show. 
Schnick. <laughs> but it's because I buy two bags of jellies, one which is fizzy and one which isn't. So I like, so I offer them around like les schnick you peek, et les schnick you peek pass. So like the ones that are fizzy, fizzy yeah. and the ones that aren't. So um, fizzy yeah. fennies. Fizzy fennies, yeah. This might be a... <laughs> This might be a branding thing written all over it. I think this is, but then of course yeah. you go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we've well, like I've definitely like we've come up with our own kind of lingo here in the this kind of French English. Did I tell you about the thief? What? Actually, this is what um I meant to put an explanation of this on my Instagram because people are like, a few people asked me about it. You know, when I was cycling home with the chicken hat, yeah. And one of the girls passed me out and she was beeping. I don't know if you could hear what I what I said, but um, they asked me ages ago, um, teach us something in English. And um, I was like, well, you know, we say, what's the crack? What's the crack? And they're like, oh, okay. But I was explaining to them about the word crack. But also when you see the top of someone's arse, you say, what's the crack? Because that's your arse crack, yeah. basically. And they were like, oh, cool. Yeah, that's funny. And I was like, what's the word for, you know, your, your actual crack, like the crack of your arse? And it's thief, but it's it's an acronym. It's like something entre fess, like the, the, the line between your arse cheeks, S-I-F. So now we just say, ça va le thief, which is what's the crack? So um, I, I like, lo- what a hybrid. What a, what a, yeah. what for the want of a better phrase, what a deep, a deep hybrid, because you have to, you have crack. a, you have, geez, you've inv- actually invented your own. That's some AI shit. You've invented your own language. Mm. Wow, yeah. that's that's class. Yeah, this class. So nicknames all from that. Good, but I love shit like that. You know, mixing up languages. Yeah, words. yeah, yeah. I love that. That's brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez. But, um, anyway, I, yeah. uh, sorry. Um, you had some exciting times. So I spoke to you last. Yeah, well, I mean, we do obviously they been gigging like crazy, but then last night then had did a very fun one. Um, I mentioned our podcast, managed to crowbar in our podcast and everything in the middle of it. Um, Excellent. It was. They'll be, they'll be delighted if tuned in. Did you know <laughs> what? You'd be surprised. There's not a lot on their plate other than, you know, <laughs> they got to listen to podcasts and stuff. But I hosted yeah. the the uh, Monster Rugby Players Ball last night and. It was purely for the players and, and the wives and whatnot. It was John Klein thought, you know what, we should really just have, you know, because a, there's a big swathe of players actually leaving as well and they kind of wanted to acknowledge them and stuff like that. So it was loosely based, the night was very loosely based around awards and appreciation. But okay. they brought me on board to uh, roast them, roast them all. And I mean, bring bring a flamethrower. And I gave him the choice at the top of the night. We can do golf dinner, which is like a three and a half, or we can go straight to the roast of Tom Brady. That's standard. And that's a 10. And quite a few of them shouted for 10. So I went, okay. You asked for 10. And I went everywhere that you would want me to go. And I went <laughs> everywhere on everybody. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and everybody, I think there was a lot of... <gasps> A few times, Jesus, and what they weren't expecting because there was a nice podium set up for me there. There was a nice staged area set up and it was all very lovely and whatnot. But what they weren't expecting was that I requested uh, a radio mic so I can now walk the entire room. I didn't stand on the stage at all. So you can't hide and not answer me. I'm coming after you. And it was funny. And we like everybody had a very good time. And I won't. I (laughs) I can't reveal too much, as you can imagine. It was their own private thing too. It was. It wouldn't be fair. Yeah. But what did you say about the podcast? Sorry, you're going to say something else there. Hang oh, on. I said. By the way, I said I don't know if all of you know this, but you're not getting out of this door without subscribing to Banana and Bear's Rugby Podcast. And uh, oh my God, simple as that. And they were just going, well, whatever he's saying, let's listen. Whatever he's saying, let's just listen because he's so <laughs> he's so aggressive in his comedy that it's as well to just go along with it because yeah. these boys. While they're very, very, like the, the questions, like it would be broken during their meals. So I would step out for their meals and stuff that, you know, whatever. But yeah, the, the, res, the resounding thing that was coming up, lads, were, they were coming up to me with, how the fuck are you so fast to, to talk when somebody comes out with something? I went, because that's my job. It's my job. Yeah. Do you know the way yeah, you're yeah, really yeah. good yeah. at rugby? Because you do mm-hmm. it all the time. Well, imagine mm. 
and they were able to appreciate it from then like you know um, yep. but it was it was a it was a lot of fun to say that they were ready to be some weren't able weren't as ready as you would hope to let the guard down and let the the character drop a small bit um I will give an honorable shout out to a man I never met before or never um Ollie, again. <laughs> Ollie, ah, no, Ali Yeager. We had a mustache off, and I admitted him wholeheartedly that the man had the greatest mustache in professional rugby. Uh, yeah. And yeah. in fair, if no, in and in fairness, the the a recent enough signing, Sean O'Brien from Munster, who has a very good mustache, but he beca- his would be kind of a, on a weaker level of mine. But then you have so what we did was we actually had a almost like you know the stages of man you see coming from monkey to to or, you know from ape through to neanderthal to and it was similar in the mustache you know the, the i suppose the trajectory of a great mustache starts somewhere mm-hmm. around sean o'brien passes by mine and then ends up at ollie yeager and we got a round of applause it was a fantastic mustache off it was great we hugged it was it was fantastic it was great so yeah it was a Wonder. good good time had by all and the rinsing yeah let's just say everybody had a had a lovely head of hair in them this morning after the rinse and they got. And it was great. It was great. It was very refreshing. Cathartic, it seemed to be. Because I said yeah. the things that people would never normally say to them. And they were like, yeah. ah, at first it stung. But after a while, it was like, oh, this is okay. Yeah. But I went yeah. after the big dogs first, which is what you do. And then everybody was okay. I went after the yeah. big, big people first. And once the, all the daddies in the room got a, got a good kick in, everybody else could re- relax and get ready for theirs. And uh, good time was had by all. Fantastic nice. venue, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful. Such the Woodlands Hotel. They're such a lovely. Like, do you ever walk into a place and go, "Oh God, this is smash!" But not in a kind of a, an awe inspire. Like, oh, like it's too beautiful to lean against the wall. It is, yeah. but at the same time, you feel like, "But I'd say I could lean against this wall." And yeah. as soon as you meet the family that own it, they all work there. And work their socks off. The yeah. absolute legend, the matriarch Mary, she kept me a dinner. Right, John Klein had said to her, "Tom hasn't eaten yet because I don't. You wouldn't eat through these things, like because you're." Mm-hmm. And she went, oh, "Don't." She already had me a dinner set aside between the two of them. They'd be. Uh... She went, now in you come and it sat me down in my own little restaurant at the back and had my. I was, but just the loveliest people you've ever met and all super hard working but super cool they have a petting farm that I really wanted to go into as I walked out to my car with, with the Jaegers uh, this peacock just started screaming at me over the fence I was like Jesus like terrifying at 12 o'clock in the night hang on now which one is the woodlands where is it it's around the back of Adair Manor it's around it connects to the back yeah. the property of Adair Manor but they yeah. are a very different vibe they have these Things that it's so so up and a capeless the street. They have this section that they call the tree the treehouse, and it's this beautiful kind of log bar that, that they build out of you know out of kind of decking and stuff. But then it's like a mini festival. They've all these little wooden cabins built, and they've given them great all wood names like Willow and Birch and stuff. And you could rent it for a few hours or the whole day and just be served drink there all day. And right across from that is a is you know the shipping containers that they do up nice or well, one is chips one is pizza one is ice cream and one is coffee or you can be served booze all day they have tellies in them and for this winter they're going to have heaters in them little log burners in them unbelievable, unbelievable Annie. you wouldn't be- and this is out in the sticks this is out in the countryside you yeah, wouldn't yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you know this sort of mini thing looks like something that would pop up in a trendy place in Europe or or yeah. even Belfast has a cool one but this is I just tipped my cap every corner of this place they'd used it and used it well and it was just class and started all from a four bed cottage by that lady Mary who was 72 she was standing beside me last night at the latest time she goes what else would I be doing my husband's dead 10 years what else would I be doing I went God bless you this is cool it was very, yeah just a very very nice vibe throughout you could see why Mary. they pick it, pick it on a regular basis but Mary tip of the cap to the the Woodlands Hotel very very nice place um but yeah, some interesting rugby. I suppose we should talk about a bit of rugby. We caught up for long enough. There's some very interesting rugby gone by in the last two weeks. There's so much. I feel like I can't even keep track. What, no. um How was the Monster match anyway? Monster Connacht. Uh, the Monster Connacht match. It was. It was great. It was. It was just lovely. It's. It, it. It was Monster looked a bit jaggedy at the beginning, but you never got the feeling that 
they were just closing down defensively. They were closing everything down that Connacht. Now, there was a couple of, uh, I think Zebo got caught for one of them. It was a beautifully wide pass thrown out to their winger. Um, his scrum cap, I forget his name. He's, oh God, he's the Australian. Um, and it's not, it's not uh, Mac Hansen. He's still injured. But that was all you felt they were ever going to score was just these lucky kind of, you know, mm. it just, everybody seemed to be on it. And it was great being at the game because you could see the moves that some of them were pulling off that would never show up on camera, you know, that kind of way. But they put him to the sword, which I brought up last night at the at the thing. Why did you have to beat him by nearly 50, lads? Could you not have left him off at 30 odd? But it was, uh, I, I think the explanation was, no, it was for what Bundy did to O'Mahony's garden. It was it was payback. It was... Okay. <laughs> well, it, it was my suggestion that that's why they did it. But it was it was a great, it was a lot of fun um, running into people and bringing dad as well. He was just so excited by the whole scenario, you know, that kind of way. And we got parking right beside it. Couldn't have worked out better parking right beside it. But um, yeah, it was great. It was great. And you know, like kids, we were eating burgers and chips and far more than we should have and had a couple of, you know, uh, Guinness Zeros, by the way, they are not bad at all. Yeah. You know, they are not bad yeah. at all. Yeah, uh, great. Kind of nice to like enjoy a pint. like. Yeah, you know. okay, yeah, as part of the occasion, it was nice to to, to have a yeah. pint. But it was, do you know what? There was there were some players who came to the fore, rightly. I mean, Thomas Ahern scored a try in the end. That was brutal. It, like, it was brutal in its impact and his stand, like, Clearly, the man has gone so super strong. He he took a ball up the left, and what I mean, the player coming at him, I think was I can't remember was a winger, but he had every right to tackle him. Do you know what I mean? He had every right mm-hmm. to tackle him, but but Ahern just leaned back into him, and I mean flattened the guy. Like the guy didn't get a hand on him. I mean flattened him, and didn't change an inch of his trajectory. Just you're like whoa, fuck, wow, right. Now you're clipping pace like a winger and you can smash people like a gigantic human that you are. Yeah. Um, it was uh, For me, that stood out. It was like, okay, you're one of the young players that has, re- like we said it, you know, a year and a half ago, he'll be in an Ireland jersey, but now you, it's undeniable. Like it was yeah, really, yeah. Re- yeah, it was, it was it, to see it in the raw, it was like, Jesus Christ, that is an impact that a big winger could have taken him out of it, but couldn't. It looked like a, a man playing against a boy. Like it was, but a, a great day. And we drove back then, listened to the Cork Limerick match, was one of the most epic games that I've oh, ever heard. No. Uh, epic games. We, you know, this the, 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 went back and forth, back and forth. And it looks like Cork, who beat the living piss out of my beloved Tipperary yesterday, as myself and Dennis Leamy watched it crying. Um, looks like Cork may win the All Ireland this year. But anyway, that's for another podcast. Fuck, it'd be fucking great. Listen to this shit now. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I was Tipperary were never at the races anyway this year. Ah, but your Cork haven't had success in ages. Would you give us nothing? They haven't. I it kills me because I have a girl for Cork and they have done nothing but shit the bed for the last 20 years nearly. And they were class (laughs) when I lived in Cork, they were class. I'm always so grateful for the, the Cork success happening when I was like. A teenager. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh my god! Like how would how would the impact that had on my teenage years is unfucking believable. Yeah, and it's then, your formative years. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Getting on the train and fucking like drinking for the first time. Do you know? Like yes, yeah. unbelievable. Um. Yeah. Were you, were you able to catch any of the URC this this weekend, or did you spot any of the results coming up? Because it was crazy Saturday. No. Friday through oh, to Saturday evening. I saw some of the results. I saw some of the results were nuts. But um, so I actually d- haven't seen any highlights. The only highlights that have been coming up on my feed are from top 14. Um, of course. Yeah, it's not, yeah, of course. Of course. My it, was, it was, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, the, 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 it was, there were shocks. I mean, the, the, we don't know yet because the, the season has to play out. You know, there's one more game. Uh, Is there, okay. Uh, round so 18, I think. Left. Yeah, okay, it's a yeah. it's a dead rubber for a lot. Some it isn't at all. Like there's, you know, it's there. It's now going to come down to. Hmm? Is it this weekend? Uh, no, I think they have a no. The first I know, anyway, it's the weekend of the first. I think they have a free weekend this weekend coming. Um, I think it's the weekend of the first. Sure, this weekend is Heineken Cup final. Yes. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So going into that Heineken Cup final as a Leinster player, you with a lot of your starters. On, 
and losing to Ulster. Uh, like, I think, I think Leinster have been kind of found out a little bit. Do you know what I mean? They're, it doesn't seem like a mature type of rugby that's cuter than the opposition, if you know what I mean. They just have unbelievable athletes who are trained out the yin-yang. But if mm. you figure them out, mm. I, which I think Ulster had, they had him figured out the other night. Mm. Like you had starter starters. You had Hugh Keen and you had Dan Sheehan's, you had Tyke mm. Furlong. There were starter starters playing. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, the, the seconds gone out there. Like it was proper. Pro- mm. And Ulster, I mean, unbelievable audience. I watched, I only got to see the extended highlights. I got, there's like a 20 minute one up on YouTube and it's great. But the audience, they have a mic. They have to have a mic. They must be having a mic. There's no way an audience that size is creating that noise. If they have, fair play to them. The Seahawks did it with the their new stadium. Do you know, they they ha- they have to have a mic. It doesn't sound like Tomid wouldn't create it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The Aviva sure shit wouldn't create it. But they were all in unison. Uh, and it was unbelievable. Like they were, they had, they were paying for blood from the second they came out. You know, it was, it was a, uh, it was as very much a 16th man scenario and Ulster looked I mean they looked like they had the number um, Jacob Stockdale classic classic pick off from uh, an intercept and it's still shocking to see a man that size burn everybody he's yeah. still yeah he's still got his pace or he's got his pace back he fucking yeah. scorched everybody and an intercept from hits 22 up oh, fucking great yeah. well done yeah it was, it was cool to see him kind. You know, he's back like to a degree because he's mm. so what a weapon to have. Like, because you're losing a shitload of players. Yeah, their money, their money, yeah. sure. I know. Kitchoff uh, is out. Um, who else? But it would seem they came out in great support the other night, when you could easily have looked at that that in the calendar and went, "Well, that's us getting our hands, our whole hand to us," because it's Leinster, like. Yeah. But they yeah, didn't. Yeah. They ra- like the place was rammed and all white. Do you know what I mean? Oh, rammed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looked. Jesus, it looked like it. Like it didn't look like the team that was, you know, mm. who they were supporting. Like it looked like the team that had a huge amount of success. But it seemed like they must have got their so their social media's out there going, get out and support us. You know what I mean? Waiting to see what we'll do with some support, and they well, did. That's great. Like I get you know, however hard done by like Monster must feel about like the whole like contracted players and da 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 oh yeah how do Ulster and, and Connacht feel like do they feel just completely forgotten because the main conversation is between players being moved between Leinster Monster and Monster and, yeah. whatever, and then like fucking Le- Connacht or Ulster being used for like blooding players and then like shipping them on or I don't know um, but fucking yeah fair play that's a great result for Ulster Great result because it was it's um what's his name that's after taking over? Is it Richie Murphy has taken over? They've given him oh. the contract. Yeah, they've given him the contract. All oh, right. Yeah, I think they have anyway to possibly they must have given him one for next year because um he's not shy of the hair the hair dryer treatment, apparently. There is none of this, you know, fucking your fair play to you lads, look, you stick with your program. Apparently he'll light you up like which is great. Right. It seems to be that's what they needed. Mean. That's what Irish rugby needs as well. Fucking all four provinces taking the heads off each other, like. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, and it it looked exactly like that. Now, I mean, it wasn't great. It, Will Connors looked sharp out. He was he did got a block down, but it was it should have it was a big telegraph kick from Freddie or from um, what's his name Burns? Is it Freddie Burns? No, not Freddie Burns. Billy Freddie Burns? Burns is his yeah Billy Burns. I was like, oh jeez, it was one of those moments like. Oh, he's coming to us. Great. But I'm um, he is a class player. But there is there was this a telegraph from a country mile back. You know, he's swung his leg all the way back. So Will Connors ran from about 20 yards with his hands up in the air. Of course he got it. Oh, um, still the try had to be finished as a result of it, but they're like, Jesus lad, could you not see yeah. your man coming? Just yeah, feign yeah. the kick and just step around him. He's gone. But anyway. Yeah. Either way, they still got it over, and it was it was kind of there must have been a bit a bit of sweet justice in it. It was sixty odd minutes. It was seventy odd minutes gone. They were down by a point, I think. They were down by a point, and they were, or maybe they were they were level. Were they level? I can't. No, they were down by a point, and John Cooney step up, 
from mm. nearly about about forty five meters out. Yeah. And geez, you think you think you can hear silence in Tormund when a kick has been kicked? Even Ron Nugent was whispering like this. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is his moment. Can he keep his trajectory? Can he do it? And he did. He, it, but it must have been as a former Leinster player, you know, who's kind of been. I guess I won't say mistreated. I don't know what the story is, but he probably feels a bit aggrieved. He's come out a bit before, you know. You know, yeah, he has, stay, uh, you know, but so, but it must have been a kind of a sweet when that landed over the bar. And they're like, all right, let's see this one out. Definitely, yeah, fucking fair play. Well, and of course, Munster, Munster beat Edinburgh on Friday night, but we we'll get to that and say just purely only the fact that they beat him, Leinster lost, and the uh, and Glasgow lost to the Lions. Oh yeah, uh, again, kind of looked like a shite match to be honest with you. I mean. Glasgow looked at sixes and sevens. They got a couple of tries in, but I don't know. I don't know. It didn't look like high quality stuff. Like I wouldn't fear either one of them looking at it. Like no, if they had their tails up, maybe. But I was kind of like, all right. I can. So you're at the top of the table of playing like that all the time. What the fuck is this? You know, it just didn't look like high quality rugby. Now, in saying mm-hmm. that, Monster were dog shit in the first half against Edinburgh. They were yeah. fucking dropping balls. There was now Edinburgh made it hard on them. They were up on on their faces and stuff. But it was you know, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Now, the, again, I'd say it could have been a more comprehensive thing. But if if Jack Crowley is the, well, let's say, Irish passport holding fly halves, number one, number one and a half is Ben Healy. Oh, my God. He's the king of Edinburgh. Like he's He ran that team around the field. He was pulling off those fucking, you know, those 30 meter rockets that he can pull off. He was showing off all his skills. Very, yeah. very, yeah. It was it was kind of bittersweet watching it. You're like, yeah, I know. but what do you do? Um, what do you do? You can't have two kings in the castle. Like, so, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and do you do, yeah. like we just talked about, do you ship him off to Connacht or ship him off to, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it is, it is what it is, but we're kind of bittersweet looking at it. But he, he's class. He's class. And he's playing, playing every single week. He's obviously grown into it. And, you know, you've, You've the likes of uh, out there. Although I can't do the Scottish accent. Have you seen? This is just a a, a side note. Have you seen Baby Ari in there? No. No. No, I don't think I want to watch that. Yeah, oh, so you've heard too much about it, then, have you? Maybe I uh, I I had um, I saw a clip of it. I don't know where was it. I I saw a clip of it. I don't I don't know why, and I saw people discussing it, and I've heard people discussing it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> or, or or is it recommended? Like, what is should I watch it? It is very well done, and it's a it's a true story. I've met your man. Like, I knew he was doing he was doing Edinburgh when I was there years ago, and he you know shite like he was shite comic, but he he came around the full way of to being able to tell this story, and he did it as a, a one man stage show, and it was uh. It won the Olivier Award and everything. Like it was, and then Netflix went. This is the most un, fucking, believable, incredible, holy shit story that we could do over seven episodes. And it's true. It's just true as God. Like it's true. The, the people have been confirmed. It's just like. But I saw the interview with your one. You see, this is the thing. I can't recommend it to you now because the cat has kind of out of the bag. I never heard of it. I knew of Richard Gadd from yonks ago. If I racked my brain and saw his post or whatever, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was up the road from my venue. Yeah, yeah. But it was Natasha said, this is supposed to be unreal. And she goes, I watched the first five minutes and I know you wouldn't want to watch stuff that's about stand up or whatever. But I think this is really good. I went, All right, we'll give it a go. And I swear to God, Every, the ending of everyone was, wasn't I need to watch the next one it was actually so intense you're like I might give that a night or two before we watch that again this Jesus fucking Christ it was yeah I, it's a, I, I would suggest as a very good show but the fact that you've kind of the cat is out of the bag a bit because I didn't know much about it I didn't know anything about it it was yeah, amazing. No, I think I still, uh, still enjoy it I just I don't I don't watch much Netflix so I kind of like when I hear things recommended I'm like meh well, I'd same as that. I'm rarely kind of would go with the with the crowd because maybe that's a cynical bastard in me. But I gave I gave it a go and it was worth it. But uh, but yeah, Bibi Reindeer. When you'll know what I'm talking about when you. 
it's okay, like you okay. may be reading there but yeah. uh, move of the night like from Munster Alex Nankivell whipped the most delicious but he must have seen Ben Healy doing it go fag it I'll give it a fagging guy and he lashed one out to Antoine Frisch who's unfortunately leaving Munster pulled off a kind of a Jacob you know where he's going yet uh, is this I'd, I'd heard that Toulon had given him offered him a four year deal I don't know yeah. I hadn't the cheek to ask him last night although I should have I should yeah. have but it seems to what? me when, when lads are leaving they don't <laughs> none of the rest of them give a shit they're like well you're gone you're gone that's it yeah 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 definitely but um, when is the draw for next time you're being made I was, I've been literally googling that before we, we we started recording and I can't seem to find it maybe I there's so much comes up with this tidal wave of URC comes up I'm like ah uh, fuck hopefully Anna knows so I don't know. It'll have I, to be. I'm feeling they do it like before the final. I, yeah. I had a feeling that they did it before the final so that you're already talking about next season before the finals play, but the finals play next week. So they'd, they'd have to do it maybe fucking soon. This yeah. Week. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it seems to always catch me by surprise when when the, right. the draw is yeah. done. So I don't... I do, I don't know. Even I was sorry. I was. It's mixed up. URC with the ERC, but the the URC even to see. Um, we don't know yet. I don't. I can't even see. Can properly look for. We obviously know Munster now have a home quarter final, um, because as a result of those two results we talked about, the the Lions beating Glasgow and and Leinster going down mm. Munster, have, and it's like, it's like everything from last year happened is happening all over again. It's like what the, 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 the fuck? It was like a course. Look, everybody's fit and healthy now. Um, yeah. Although I did see a, a player in a boot last night that I wasn't happy to see. I was like, yeah, oh, no, you've been playing very well. But it is what it is. Might, uh, might be all right in a couple of weeks. I don't Probably know. Probably a cautionary thing as well. Possibly, but I w- nothing was being given away. He he would kind of gave it like, I know it's completely fucked. I was like, oh, God, Jesus Christ. Christ almighty. <laughs> um. <laughs> But other than that, it was it was uh, it was an interesting an interesting fucking hell, wherever whatever uh, the lions and I was talking about like the Le- Leinster were playing a little kind of naively kind of no cuteness about what they were up to barring that that block down that Will Connors. I watched the the lions beating Glasgow, and they are just they're literally like they're more like do you know those monkeys that would come down out of trees and steal people's cameras, mm. the lads. Ability to rob the ball out of people's hands when they don't seem to expect it. They did it about seven times during the game. It was just like my ball, and it was just—it was incredible. It was absolutely—it was absolutely fair. But it was like, oh wait, 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 wait! This is a whole new thing that we haven't seen in rugby before. We've seen big clambering fucking paws swiping at the scrum half from rocks and stuff, but this was literally in the tackle, and it wasn't some smash and grab, rip it and. It was literally go get your hands in and out as fast as you can, and chances are you'll whip the ball away. It was I, I saw it about five or six times, and I went, "This is genius." They're not looking for an impact; they're just going yeah. yoink, like absolutely. Yeah. You could go yoink and get away with it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then everybody seems to be aligned, ready for it. They're all out to yeah. go. Woo! We got the ball. Yeah, nice. nice it was tactic. a it was a lovely tactic, but it just and you, to see the shock. For a split second on a person on a player's face, gone, huh? Yeah, I thought I thought we we're supposed to hit each other for this thing. It's like, nope, gone. Yeah. And then they're wingers. <laughs> Jesus, Christ, we are not catching either one of them boys. Like, do you know those lads who run, but like, they're so into it. Do you know what I mean? Their head is flying everywhere, and everything. Every body part is flying. You're like Werner Gee. Cox style. Yeah, yeah, Werner Cox style, exactly. And that's what it was watching these was like, Jesus Christ. So I, it, it, the South African teams offer a different prospect in that sense. It was exactly what I was hoping for. It was like, oh, this is something cool. You're not just going around trying to smash people because you're massive. It was the yeah. polar opposite. It was like what, you know, Japan when they, two World Cups ago, when they turned up being the fittest lads in the place and yeah. they were able to run teams because of just being really fit. It was cool. Yeah. It was really cool to watch. But yeah, uh, my takeaway from the weekend was, "Hi oh, Jesus, Penn Healy, what you got?" Mm, but yeah, nothing you could do with him. Nothing you could do with no. him. No. Oh, so I don't. I don't know what the what any any or whatever outcome. But Munster now play a very strong Ulster 
in two weeks' time. And Ulster with their tails up, shall we say. Uh, we don't know what Leinster will come out of it. Will they be still hung over from a win in the Heineken Cup final? Um, oh, will be, they be hung over from a loss? In the yes. Yeah, Jesus, <laughs> three years in a row would be hard, wouldn't it? That'd be... Yeah, but it's hard, but it's also yeah. fucking... That's, that's sport. It, like, oh, I know, I know. We have that, um, we have that kind of... Uh, Thing here in in La Rochelle, so the, the the girls team here they've lost in the final the last two years and they lost in the semi final the year before, so there seems to be this kind of like oh oh we'll win it so this year, you know because because you know yeah. third year in a row, but but it doesn't work like that. You have to fucking and we are like you know we've like it's a very young team. We've a lot of like uh addressing like culture and things like that, but it's you know the, I've. I've kind of heard a bit of a like, oh, but you know, we want to be champions of France this year, like, but it's almost like it's going to happen because they've lost it last year. It's like that's not how it works. And I was thinking about Leinster. I was like, ah, like they they could win it this year, but also they might not. So it's not just because three years in a row. Oh, three years in a row actually means nothing. Yeah, it might give you a bit of extra hunger, but also doesn't mean that you have to win. That last you're going week, to win. Anna means nothing. Last week means nothing. Your last training session meant nothing. It's quite you know, literally down yeah. to the game on the day, like absolutely. Do you know what it reminds me of? I don't know if you remember um the George Hook speech right before two thousand six Heineken Cup final. We and talked about like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sport has no memory. <laughs> sport, sport has no memory, and I like basically that's the line I remember saying that. It doesn't matter that Munster are hurting for so many years. Like, you still have to fucking win. And uh, he, although he's right, it actually, you know, uh, you know, you, you could lose a fucking game like that, but it just, just so happened that they didn't and that they won. And Tom Gark is like, I think you'd be terrified if George said Munster was going to win. <laughs> well, so, it's, um, it, 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 you know, it's, in his own own way, he's right. And but it's you, we forget that every some, and that's why we love sports because we like to make drama and make a little, you know. And we watch sporting movies, and of course, there's fairy tale moments, and there's this, and it's due, you know, it's your right. Nobody has a right to not. And you actually, it was only when I it comes through when like when you speak, and then I'm meeting like players like that now last night, and you could see there was death behind their eyes when it came to any sentiment. It was like. It means nothing. Sentiment means nothing to this. You can just fuck up on the day, not be good enough, whatever. Sure, you. It's you'd... definitely something that feeds more into the fan base. Yeah, but it, but it is useful. It's definitely useful in when you're kind of training and when you're preparing and when you're getting trying to get your head in the game. Like it does, you do use a lot of the sentiment and emotion, but also sure, you use it as a tool. To, to unlock the hard work that you've done and that you're, you know, to, to get you kind of prepared. But like, it, you can't go off that alone. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That is, you're Jewish or whatever. Like, but... Um, um, I don't know. Did you see any of the women's rugby for the weekend? There was unbelievable game between Australia and USA um, that I watched here. It was fucking brilliant. Oh my God, like... I see well, it on I TikTok. I see an awful lot of women's rugby on TikTok pops up. Yeah, yeah. But I just get to see the tries. Yeah. Oh, some of the tries are unbelievable. Sad. Actually, one of the Honey Badgers, um, Georgia Frederick, she was in the centre for Australia. She was fucking unbelievable. But um, but USA fucking came back and won it. Australia have a new coach. <coughs> Joey App is her name. Um, she coached me in Barbarians. She was the coach in Worcester. And obviously Worcester have folded, Worcester Warriors have folded men's and women's. So she was in the market and she was given the Australia head job. Wow. And um and she she's brilliant, like very and a fantastic coach, rugby wise and culture wise. Um and I think I just hearing the players talking about her is really cool. But so I'm a little bit disappointed for Australia that they didn't they they, they missed out on qualification for WXV one which is the one that Ireland has qualified for, and USA are in. USA qualified for WXV1. Um, I was delighted for USA. Those, they're fucking, like, they have a new coach as well. Like, I know a lot of those girls, like, they work so hard. And then Canada beat New Zealand for the first time in, oh, sorry, first time ever? It first has to be. It has them. to be. I think it's the first time they ever beat. Well, Canada women have been very strong for a very long time. So, 
I can't think of maybe would they've beat them around um two thousand and kind of ten to between two thousand and ten to sixteen kind of a thing, but they haven't. And um uh so Canada won the pack four because it's the first first time being New Zealand and they won the pack four tournament. So uh there's Was one it? more game left though, I think. I feel like there's another game, another weekend of games, or maybe uh maybe that's the end of it now. I I, I thought oh no there is because Australia needs to win or they were waiting on some result. Anyway, um, it was brilliant. Fucking unbelievable games of rugby from the weekend. And they were nice as they were like morning breakfast rugby. Yes. And they're all on Rugby Pass for free. Rugby Pass is the job. It is uh, growing, growing. It's class, isn't it? Yeah, all the documentaries and um, so much on there on Rugby Pass. I still can't find Chasing the Sun too, though. It's, if anyone has the dodgy box link. It, I don't know if it's on this side. Is it up on Rugby Pass yet? No, it's not. Because uh, I was like, oh my God, Chasing the Sun is there. And then I put it on. I was like, oh, I've seen this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Where was Chasing the Sun? No, I I don't think it's on yet. I I think, I don't know. It's a fair while from coming out or something. They have, they've had screenings of it for specific folk no, or whatever it's out in South Africa I know people who've, who've watched oh it. have you right right yeah. right because I've just seen yeah. the odd clip and that's about it like you sent me on a funny one like <laughs> well, Rezzy you, you fucking lied to me <laughs> what did she say oh yeah <laughs> you lied to me you fucking bastard <laughs> you're just cracking up like some fella fucking liars Yes, I know. Some fellow who who crashed into his car or something. Like, what? What kind of way is this to speak to people like? I love Razzy, lads. I I actually, (laughs) I was looking at a GIF last night. I was showing it to people when we were having a few drinks. I was laughing at it. It was like the picture of him and his, like, he got a doctorate. And it was like me at the graduation and then me at the after party, whatever. And he's just standing there with like a sword. And he's obviously like hammered. And he uh, he's just such a fucking... I love him. I love him. He's such a fucking twisted, twisted, evil genius, brilliant man. He's I love a bond, him. Yeah, he's a Bond villain of of a uh, rugby coach. And I do, I wonder too, like what does, like the thinking, the f- thought processes he must instill into his players. Like even talking to Ark, last Simon, Snyman last night, what sort is he? He goes, oh, he's fucking wild, mate. He's fucking, he's the strangest hmm. man you will meet. But, he says, when he gets the results, he was kind of saying, you can't help but go, I'm fucking all in on this guy. He's got, he's got the cheat code. So we're, and he says, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but he's got us all buying into it. No, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you need. Magic formula. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. And then if it doesn't work out, you're a fucking idiot. So, but he, but, like, it's like the turnaround of, of Eddie Jones, the perception of Eddie Jones. <laughs> yeah. From genius to absolute fucking loser. Get the fucking tea up there. Get the fucking tea up. Where's the fucking tea? I love it. Like your mother when your cousin is yeah. come or something like that. It's so funny. Um, yeah. I don't know, mate. Like, it's uh, it's bloody okay. You know, we're playing bloody good, uh, bloody good rugby. You know what I mean, mate? Yeah. Fucking hello. <laughs> and you're wearing a fucking dries bone hat going, ah, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Where where's uh, he gone to now? Is he where's he gone? Japan. Is it Japan he's gone to? I think so, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> of course he is. I know, yeah. Back to the bags from Roz fairly lively. Um but anyway, that's a crack. We'll um we'll we'll have we we'll have to do another episode before like the end of the season. But uh yeah. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how next week rolls out because I think we'll have the. Well, we'll have the. We have to talk about the, how the hiding cup final went. Uh, the and the remainder of the URC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we'll have three Irish teams in it in the last day of final eight with yeah, Ulster cool. and yeah. So I mean, it has to be talked about. Have you a game this weekend? So are you? Have you an off weekend? Off this weekend, and I can't play the semi final. Why not? My friend's getting married. So I know, I know, I know. We um I we were kind of hoping that Breve would qualify because Breve would have a higher chance of like playing on the Saturday, but they didn't Perpignan have qualified even though uh we beat we beat them yesterday, but we we're waiting on a result kind of from Breve. But there's no way Perpignan can play on a Saturday because they've to come from too far away. 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah. On the Sunday, it, same day as one of your best friends' wedding. So, but it's fine. Like it's it's just it, like the you know, given that we beat them forty eight three, I think it's not a you know, it's 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 not a huge. It's okay. Like you know, it's it's fine. Anyway, between my butt and my knee and my hamstring and everything, it's probably not the worst idea to kind of save the body before the final. Hopefully, if we get there. But um, could I suggest if you do see a karaoke again, that maybe you don't. You don't go to full Beyonce dance on it the next time for your hamstrings. That's all I'm gonna say. It takes it takes it's quite That's a dance. Kind of what I need for my hamstrings to to be activated and in uh, and in shape. <laughs> well, just bring some DPs with you the next time, at least to loosen things up. You know, a bit of wintergreen right. or something. I love the way you're going on at me for my Beyonce dancing when I fucking play 80 minutes of rugby like kicking the shit out of people full contact and you're like yeah it was the Beyonce dancing the karaoke bar. <laughs> I, I'm just suggesting you, that's where you hurt your hamstring. That's all. You ended up with a chicken hat. <laughs> you know. I'm. I'm. That's what I, that's, yeah. I as far as I know about athletics okay. that that's where you hurt it. I can't Apparently. see where you would have hurt it playing rugby. I can't. I can't. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, I'm not going to... What the fuck do I know? What do I know, for the love of Jesus? <laughs> the cow hasn't um, moved once. I'm delighted. The, the interrupting cow hasn't... She Literally, well, the interrupting cow hasn't moved once. I don't think. Well, she got a free um, live to air there now um, of the podcast. Free live well, version of, of the podcast. So. Well, unless she can listen in, into my fucking headphones, but she's just hearing me now talking to a silent woman on the screen across the way, so... Either way, it's a bollocks of a cow. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> she heard your side, yeah. <laughs> she, do you know what she is? She's an absolute bollocks of a cow because when she goes to the far side of the field, and I'm suggesting it's the one same cow because she has the one tone of moo, and her tone of moo, it is the exact re- resonance slash frequency through a building to hear her moo and through a couple of ditches that sounds exactly like your phone vibrating on a coffee table. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It is Very infuriating. Good. She and she does it at the same, the same rate, the same beat between. Mm-hmm. She's like, uh, uh, <laughs> and every time catches anybody in the house going, "Where's my phone? Is it?" And you, I said, <laughs> "Fucking cow!" That's very good. She obviously knows when you're expecting. When you're waiting for news, she doesn't care. She's just like, "I'm going to set it off at any time." She knows. I know exactly what. It sounds like I'm an asshole cow. That's what I do. Next, next, she'll be like, <laughs> that'll be her retro. When she goes real retro, then she'll start doing like the Nokia t- tunes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Probably tastes delicious. Barbecue season is among us. I'm very, very excited. Oh, the poor cow. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, yeah, as if you haven't eaten a few cows in your day. Come on now. Well, I tell you now, but um, I I know Jesus. I have I uh, we spotted um. There's this wonderful man that like um helps out with the staff in um in in La Rochelle Women's. There's loads of excellent staff around, like managers, people like that. Fella called uh, TT. We call him TT, and um, he <laughs> oh. I actually just remember this now. Last night, those Irish fellas came to the bar and I was like, oh, these lads came from Ireland and he gave him his La Rochelle hat. Stop. So, Colin, to Colin Farrell, <laughs> he has PT's La Rochelle hat. But we saw him walking past the front of the stand and the stand is full. Now, this is the other night at the top 14 game. And we were like, TT, and he like waved up at us and he started like offering us chips, even though he's standing down about, I don't know, 10, 15 rows in front of us. And he gives his chips to the people in the front row. And then he pulled his burger out of his bag and threw it into the crowd. And I got it. I was like, it was Amazing. only about a of paper. It could have fucking covered the whole row of children and supporters and fucking burger sauce. I love um, it. So, yeah, that was the last burger I had, which is just a Saturday night in the stadium. So, um. The the burgers in La Rochelle are, are in the stadium are gas because they, they'll give you one black bun and one normal oh, okay bun, yes yeah, like yeah, yellow yeah. so they've the burgers are black and yellow with their guests anyway I don't know if that would work for Monster a white one and a <laughs> fucking and a blood right. red one yeah you just throw a bit of old dye into the when you're making the buns yeah right no if I just figure it would look horrendous to be eating it but it look I, th- I think they're making enough fucking money they, that is a well oiled machine that that Tone mm-hmm. Park thing Ooh. yeah 
there at some point. Coin past nobody the gave. Burger. Do you know what? Be good old marketing. People put pictures of it up. You know what? You're a hundred percent right. I'm going to edit this out of the podcast, and we're going to set up our own little caboose just outside yeah. Toman Park, selling monster burgers. I f- but- I feel like there's a smash of words that you can have. You can put together there, like monster burgers. Bunster. Bun. Bunster. A Bunster or a brand? I think, no, I think Bunster are actually a brand of buns, I think, of burger buns. Oh. I swear to God. But then again... Bunster murgers. <laughs> anyway, we better end this podcast before all these people take our excellent business ideas. I swear to God, they will, I, this has happened to me before. This will... Fuck, don't rob them, lads. At least tell us if you're going to rob them. Please. Please. All right. It's a free burger. <laughs> A free murder. Just don't fucking throw it at Anna 15. Fuck, Jesus Christ, what a <laughs> lunatic. Because <laughs> if you saw that coming in too high, you just have to put your hand back in your pocket and walk away, wouldn't you? Just let it hit whoever hits behind going, that, that. Who, who threw that shit, huh? Oh. Do you know Do you know what? Sorry, last story, last story of the day. Um, your man, Titi. So uh, he doesn't speak uh, any English. And when we came to visit La Rochelle two years ago, and they said, would you come out and watch us play tomorrow? They sent a man in the little stad Rochelet minibus to pick us up. And I only learned the other day that it was Titi. So I like I didn't know it was him. Like I, I obviously only met him this year. Yeah. So I thought, I said, oh, they sent out some random fella to pick us up on the bus. He was like, that was me. It's like, oh my God, Titi, we go way back. <laughs> so, fucking hell. Sorry. Yeah, it's the end of the stories with Titi. <laughs> Shout out to fucking Titi. All the way up there. Thierry. Thierry. TT. I like that. Or TT. Mm. Whichever one. Whichever yeah, one. Yeah, they, they call him Sugar TT. Sugar. <laughs> as long as he's not Sugar Snakes, that's all that matters. Right. Sugar Snakes. Unreal. Mind the rocks. Mind the rocks. It's the banana and bear.